Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for another video. Today we're going to be going over the basics of Notion, so really what it looks like getting started and what some of the different things you can do with it are. Next week I'll be releasing a companion video to this one, which more looks at the pages that I have in my Notion and what I use each of them for, but today is very much Notion basics. I've tried to cover as much as I can without making this video 84 years long, but starting at the start, a very good place to start, to sign up to Notion you just need to go to notion.so and sign up with your email address. I assume there's also a way to do this through the apps they have for phones, tablets, etc. But for the sake of simplicity, today's video will all be on the computer version. Once you've signed up though, this is the space you're met with. So you have a panel down the left hand side with all of the pages you have on your Notion, and then this larger space is the contents of whatever page you're currently on. So for us, that's the getting started page. This page has a lot of useful information and also some guide videos to show you how to do different things. Personally, I'm more of a jump in and experiment for myself kind of person, rather than a read the instructions kind of person but these could certainly be a good starting place and resource for some people. To make our first page though, we're going to press on the new page button down in the bottom left corner. You can also do this by pressing on the add page button at the bottom of the pages you have in your sidebar as well. Here is our new page, but it looks a little bit barren. You can see we have a few options here, so a place for a title, and then a place to select what type of page we want. So whether we want an empty page with an icon, a just empty page, if we want to insert a template, or import a page from somewhere else. Under this we also have options for databases, but more on those later. For this one I'm going to start on an empty page. And I'm also going to press on the open as page button here, just so that it takes up the full space. Also so we actually have some things to play around with, I'm going to give this page a title, an icon, and copy in some notes. Any single piece of content you add to your page is called a block. So for instance, if you were taking notes on your page, every paragraph, title, or separate section could be considered to be a block. As fun as it is to have a wall of the same style of text, sometimes we want to change things up. There are a few ways to change the formatting of your text. The first way is to highlight the text you want to change, this will bring up the formatting bar, where you can do things like put the text in bold, italics, underline it, strike through it. You can also mark the text as code, turn it into an equation, or change the color of it, either the text itself or a highlight of the text. If you want to change the color of an entire block of text though, or change the style of the block, you can press the six dots to the left of that block and then change the colors in the color menu or change the style in the turn into menu. If when starting a new block you already know that you're going to want to have it in one of those formats, you can also press the forward slash key to bring up the basic blocks menu and then select the type of style you want. So pressing enter or the plus sign here will put a new block under the one you are currently on. But what if you want to put a block to the left or the right of another? Or essentially, what if you want to make columns? This can be done by clicking and holding on the six dots next to a block, and then dragging that block into a new position. To make multiple columns, you just need to drag it into a space where you get a vertical blue line between the block that you're dragging and the block you want in the column next to it. To then add additional blocks to each of those columns, you just need to drag and drop those underneath the start of the column. So here I have column titles of charge and current, and I just need to drag blocks underneath each of those headings. When you first make columns they will be equal in width, but if you bring your cursor in between them to see this vertical grey line, you can click and hold and then drag that line either to the left or right to make the columns different sizes. There are also options for your page in the ellipsis at the top right corner, including the page font style, the ability to change between small and regular text sizes, making the page full width or narrow width, and then also some additional options like the delete button for the page. 
Sometimes you might like to have pages within your page, or subpages. This can be done by either pressing on the plus symbol next to a block and selecting page, or you can press the six dots next to an existing block to turn that block into a page. Whatever is in that block will become the new page's title though. Any subpages you make will be nested under the main page on your sidebar. It's also good to know that you have a backlinks or breadcrumb section at the top to show you the page or pages that the one you're currently on is nested under. So for instance, the page I'm on at the moment is called title of the new page and it's nested under the notes page. Sometimes rather than making a sub page, you just want to have a link to another page you already have on Notion. This can be done by typing in the at symbol, which brings up this menu. You can then type in the name of the page you want to reference. So let's say that I want to reference the task list and then press on that page from the menu to insert a link to it here. This can be really helpful for quick links to other pages and I use it a fair bit in things like my weekly and monthly reset checklists. You'll note that these links have a little arrow next to the pages icon, which lets you know that they aren't sub pages, they're just links to other pages. Let's just say you've made a bunch of pages, but you don't really like the way that they're ordered in your sidebar. To move these around, you just click and drag the pages into the order you want. Make sure that while you're doing this, you don't accidentally nest pages that you don't want to though. For example, if I drag the page called task list here and hover it over another page, say reading list, if I drop this here, it'll make the task list a sub page in the reading list. So when pulling your pages around, we're looking for a blue horizontal line for reordering versus a blue highlighted page for making something a sub page. It's also good to know that if you reorder pages in your sidebar, just know that they will also reorder them on the page they are found on. So for instance, if you have the series of pages here, so pages one, two, and three, and if I then go and reorder them on my sidebar, you can see I now have pages one, three, and two. So those were the basics for regular pages, but before we also mentioned databases. This is where I feel the real magic of Notion is. Databases are good for information you might store in any one of these forms. So in a table, on a Kanban board, in a list, on a calendar, in a gallery, or on a timeline. The best part about databases on Notion though is that you can have different views for the same information. Starting with a table though, this is just what it sounds like, a table. <laughs> It comes already with a name and tags column, and you can change these just by pressing on the column header. While the name column has to stay as a text column, you can change the tags column to be text, a number, information you select from a list, a multi-select, so being able to select multiple things from a list, a date, a person, files and media, a checkbox, a URL, an email, or a phone number. There are more options under this, which are a bit more advanced. The main one I've used from that space though is a created time, which I use on my to-do list to tell me when I added a task. So that we have something to play around with though, I'm going to set up a couple of columns of information for a pretend task list. So columns for things like tasks, dates that they're going to be done, and categories they fall under. As I said before, one of the awesome things about databases is that you can view the same information in different ways. So at the moment, this is looking like a table, but maybe I want to be able to view it as a calendar, so being able to see what tasks I have to do when. To add the ability to view the information like that, I just have to press the Add View button at the top of my table here. I want a calendar, so I'll select that one. I can also give it a name, and then press create. You can see it just takes all that information that I put into the table and puts it in this different view for me. To access my table again though, that add a view button is now a drop down for my other views. Another view that could be helpful for this information in particular is a Kanban board. The board view in Notion can be set up to group by the information you had in any select, multi-select or person column in the original table. So for me, that's either by the context tags or the priority. 
Going back to our table though, another great feature in databases is the ability to filter the entries you have. So selecting a certain set of criteria to exclude certain entries. Let's just say I only want this view to show me the tasks that are high priority. By pressing on the filter button up here, I can then add a filter where the priority tag is high priority. Setting up views with different filters can be really helpful for when you only want to look at certain entries. So for instance, in my to-do list, I have different views for tasks related to certain contexts, like high priority tasks, tasks for school, tasks for when I'm at home, etc. Let's just say you have a page that has a database as a subpage, but you want to be able to view that database while also viewing the other things you have on that page. To effectively embed a database in a page, all you have to do is press on the six dots beside the database's title, and then press on Turn Into Inline. Notion is a fairly simple but also very powerful tool with a lot of flexibility which I love. This was just a brief overview of some of the features that Notion has to offer, but if you guys have any questions about it, please do leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. My question of the day for you though, what digital resources do you use, if any, to help you with your planning and or productivity? I of course use Notion, and a video on my Notion pages in particular is coming out next week, but in addition to this I also like to use my Outlook calendar. I hope you found today's video useful team, and if you did please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity and personal development. Until next time, bye!